Hello dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor and I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today uh, we are going to talk about high function of thyroid gland or hyperthyroidism when there are too many hormones of thyroid gland in the blood and they are causing symptoms. And our plan is what are the causes of hyperthyroid disease, what are the symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. And we will pay a lot of attention to folk remedies for these conditions. These folk remedies may be used for mild disease and mild symptoms. So, let's get started. So, please look at this figure. Here you can see how the levels of thyroid hormones are controlled in our body. These uh, glands are located in our brain. First, hypothalamus is controlling the work of pituitary gland. And pituitary gland pro produces known hormone, which is called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. Which, what is it doing? Right, it is stimulating thyroid gland. Thyroid gland will produce, it has receptors to this TSH, and it will produce the hormone of thyroid gland. We know thyroxine C4, T4, right? and it will affect the organs. If there is not enough thyroid hormones, the pituitary will produce more TSH. If there is too much, pituitary will produce less TSH. That's why in the case of two high levels of thyroid hormones, uh, it's our topic today, usually TSH will be low because the body will tell, oh, thyroid gland, don't produce as many hormones, please. But it's not under the control of our body. And why? Because there can be diffuse toxic goiter or Graves disease. It's an autoimmune condition when our body produces antibodies against our own thyroid gland and they will stimulate the receptors uh, on thyroid gland to produce these hormones. Body will turn off the production of TSH. It doesn't want these hormones anymore. But there are antibodies that will make the thyroid gland to produce more and more and cause symptoms. Next. Toxic adenoma or multinodular goiter. Uh, some nodules in thyroid gland may be active and they may produce their hormones. They are out of the control of the body. The other nodules will be non-active, non-functional, what happens in most of the cases. But if it's functional, then we have a problem and we need to solve it. Next one, pituitary adenoma. It's more rare condition when the active benign tumor is here in the, in the pituitary gland. And this is the case where TSH will be high. Because this uh, adenoma will produce TSH and it will overstimulate thyroid gland. In all other cases it will be low. And one more thyroiditis when there is inflammation of thyroid gland. And it's just destroyed by inflammation and the hormones are spilled out in the blood. That's why there are high levels of thyroid hormones. What are the symptoms? We can see weight loss, high appetite, we can see heat and tolerance, anxiety twice, we can see anxiety, we can see irritability, uh, diarrhea, very active guts, weakness of muscles that are close to the body, not these ones, not hands, but close, like uh, hips or shoulders. We can see uh, the sleep disturbance, we can see disorders of menstruation, also moist skin, uh, rapid pulse, arrhythmias, it can be atrial fibrillation, uh, it can be high blood pressure. In autoimmune condition Graves disease, also the uh, antibodies will affect the eyes and we can see uh, lack of uh, blinking, we can see a lead leg when the person lo looks down and his eyelid, upper eyelid doesn't go exactly with the eye, it will lag a little bit. First the person looks down, then the eyelid will go down afterwards. And also you can see the bulging eyes. And also it can be crisis when the hormones are very high and the person will get fever, very high pulse, high blood pressure, agitation, and it can be uh, confused. Uh, it's like delirium with fear. And this is uh, the threatening condition. What tests do doctors and the chronologists prescribe? They do. TSH, T4 and T3. Also sometimes they can prescribe thyroglobulin or radioactive iodine scan. 
this is radioactive iodine that active thyroid gland will absorb absorb and uh, it will be very well vi visible on uh, the scans afterwards next treatment this is the standard treatment we use something to block the symptoms like uh, high blood pressure high pulse uh, irritation agitation uh, by using beta blockers uh, the high overactivity of sympathetic uh, nervous system this is propranolol, atenolol, metoprolol and we need to affect our hormones I mean hormone levels by metimazole and propyl uracil. after we stabilize the condition of the patient we need to do some radical treatment we can destroy the thyroid gland by radioactive iodine or we can do surgery to remove it afterwards of course there are no hormones of thyroid anymore that's why we need to uh, give the prescribe the patient uh, to take L-thyroxine forever. Of course, I agree that this treatment is quite um, aggressive and radical, and uh, we'd like to have something more mild. That's why I'd like to tell you more about natural compounds. By the way, you cannot just not treat high thyroid gland because it can cause a lot of complications. For example, heart complication, or as you can see here. For example, this is an interesting table about TSH levels. You remember that uh, levels of TSH will be mostly low in uh, hyperthyroidism. And what we see here, for example, low TSH may cause chronic inflammation with demyelination, uh, meaning that uh, neural system will lose its uh, myelin uh, layer, which is sealing layer. It's uh, like protection of uh, our nerves. And we can have a lot of symptoms because of this, like uh, weakness and uh, numbness and uh, ataxia, for example. Multiple sclerosis is demyelinating disease, for example. We can have chronic fatigue syndrome or many painful points on our body. We can have cyst formation. Also, you see here there they will be increased uh, accelerated osteoporosis or a wasting of the muscles. That's why, of course, uh, this condition must be treated. And first treatment is uh, uh, Lycopus virginicus, or it, it's called bagelweed. It can help with symptoms like weight loss, palpitations, fatigue, uh, shortness of breath, and uh, shaking and tremor. This is the study on uh, laboratory rats when they gave them their ethanol extract, and they saw that uh, the level of T3 was decreased. We know that T4 is converted to T3, and T3 is more active hormone. That's why it's good in the case of hyperthyroidism, that level of these very active hormones, they decrease. But also, levels of T4 are decreased. And uh, this may be due to increased uh, removal of T4 from the body, and also levels of LH and TSH decrease, meaning that this uh, herb may act centrally on our central uh, on our brain glands that uh, control the thyroid gland. So it seems like it has several effects in this condition. And here we see the uh, investigation on humans. It's already Lycopus Europeus. They took hyperthyroidism patients with the symptoms, mild hyperthyroidism, and they saw that uh, the urinary excretion of T4 was increased and their symptoms were improved. The tolerance was good, no really serious adverse reactions. The other one, they uh, took three groups. One was getting uh, the extract of Lycopus for uh, four weeks. The other, they took the group who were taking it within the last two uh, years. So they saw if this effect is stable or not. And the last group was uh, no treatment at all. And there were 403 patients and they saw that really the use of this extract was more effective than uh, no treatment at all. Of course, it would be better to compare it with some placebo. A few methods of uh, folk medicine. You can make a tea from uh, bagel wheat. One to one half of uh, teaspoons of bagel wheat. You add uh, the cup of boiling water. You wait for 10 minutes, filter it, uh, let it uh, cool down a little bit and drink once a day. The other one, you can take the tincture of bagel wheat, four to eight drops to the spoon of water, then you put it under your tongue and keep it there three times a day. Not good for pregnant and breastfeeding women, and if you're taking something 
already against the hormones of thyroid gland, uh, better not to take this, or at least uh, always consult with your doctor. Next one, motherwort. This is the well-known remedy, which is natural beta blocker. That's what I told you before. In traditional treatment, we use beta blockers against the symptoms, uh, especially the symptoms on heart and blood pressure and pulse. And this is the natural one. It doesn't really help uh, affect uh, hormones of thyroid gland. It can help to decrease the symptoms. It can help with palpitations, heart rate, insomnia or anxiety. You can take one tablespoon of motherwort plus one cup of boiling water and wait for 15 to 20 minutes. Cool down, drink once or twice a day. Or you can take tincture, 10 to 20 drops into a glass of water, drink uh, twice a day. If you're taking some other medications for blood pressure and for heart, always be very careful with this uh, curb. Next one, lemon balm or melissa. Uh, this is a well-known remedy. This is, first of all, it's very nice and uh, tasty and uh, good smelling drink. Then it will help with uh, nervousness, with headache, with vertigo, with uh, high blood pressure, and it may help with hyperthyroidism also. And it's really affecting the action of TSH on the receptors in thyroid gland and also an action of antibodies in Graves' disease on the receptors. That is the believed uh, mechanism of action of Melissa. Use two tablespoons of Melissa, one half cup of water, and uh, wait for 10 minutes. Drink one to two times a day. Next, don't forget that your body must have enough vitamins, minerals, vitamin C, good antioxidant. Uh, take, uh, eat a lot of food that is rich in vitamin C. For example, it can be uh, wild rose uh, or rose hip. I have a video about rose hip and how to um, brew it um, correctly to save uh, the high amounts of vitamin C. Or you can just green it and uh, take it as their supplement, for example. Also some purpose or citrus or many other fruits and vegetables, they may be rich in vitamin C. All consider taking supplements of vitamin C. Vitamin B12, often we see the deficit of vitamin B12 in hyperthyroid patients. That's why eat food that is rich in vitamin B12. Uh, of course, it's an animal product, especially liver or red meat. And uh, sometimes uh, supplements of vitamin B12 may be needed. Magnesium is very important for normal work of thyroid gland and um, iodine metabolism. That's why um, magnesium-rich products must be included into your diet. It's nuts, seeds, green leafy vegetables, whole grains, and sometimes you may need to take supplements. Calcium, vitamin D, calcium get it from food, vitamin D, check level first, then if needed, you may uh, get the supplements. Very important for bone health and um, because uh, during hyperthyroidism we know that there is increased risk of accelerated uh, osteoporosis. Next one, oats, superfood. I always eat oats every morning. It can cause with hyperthyroidism symptoms. It's very rich in fiber and can uh, help to remove T4 from your body. Not really highly investigated during hyperthyroidism, but it may help. And it may help with diarrhea during hyperthyroidism. And one more, cholesteramine. Uh, there are cases of crisis, hyperthyroidism crisis of thyrotoxicosis that were treated with, of course, beta blockers and cholesteramine. It helps to bind the bile salts in the guts and then they won't be absorbed back and um, this uh, remedy is used often for um, decreasing cholesterol and uh, bad cholesterol so-called bad cholesterol because the bile won't be reabsorbed and the body will lose the bile and cholesterol also it will help to remove t4 from the body and in one case uh, of uh, thyrotoxicosis they say that optimal was to take cholesteramine for 4 grams 2 to 4 times a day for 4 weeks. And it helped with uh, the normalization of hormones of her thyroid gland. Some other substances that may help, they are mostly antioxidants like turmeric, bromelain, omega-3, quercetin, or physetin. Milk sisal may help uh, their 
liver licorice is anti-inflammatory hawthorn berries may help with protection of heart and these two uh, herbs may help uh, to cool down the immune system in autoimmune condition called graves disease dear friends this is all for today always be careful if you consider self-treatment that's why it's always highly recommended to get consultation from your medical professional but in some cases these additional uh, natural remedies may really help in milder disease my name is dr igor i wish you good luck and good health and god bless you bye bye